Do you think about your water use in your day-to-day -day life? There's no doubt most of us are more aware of it and we're making smarter choices in terms of choosing low water use appliances and water saving devices. But are we falling short of our true potential when it comes to saving water at home? We're conducting a two year study of 10 suburban homes around the coastal area of Fremantle, Western Australia. This unique research project looks at the impact of design, behaviour and access to information on our home's operational environmental performance. We call the project Living Labs. In this episode, we're looking at how the homes are using water. In Perth, where I live, around 70% of all the water supplied through the mains network is used by households. And of that, a staggering 40% is used on our gardens and a further 25% for showers and baths. But it's not hard to make some simple changes that will convert to big savings of water and money. The 10 homes in the study are already doing really well with their water use, as the data collected over the first 12 months shows. But for this study, we want to see if the householders will push even further to reduce it, if we show them how. The participants didn't have access to the data over the first 12 months. At that stage, the project research team visited each home to show them their water use results and to get a better understanding of how they use water in and around their homes. At Alex and Renee's, water usage was quite high compared to the rest of the homes in the study, and we found that there were some easy ways to make savings. So here's what we advised them to do. They could change shower and tap fittings to low flow, switch off irrigation to establish native plants and trees, and reduce irrigation run times. Six months later, we can see that there has been a reduction of an impressive 47%. We were all blown away by the result and keen to find out how they did it. We turned off a lot of the irrigation, oh, yeah, we plugged, plugged, up, plugged up a lot of things. And this year too, we've been more aware of what our watering days were, where we were a little bit haphazard before. And mm -hmm. it was just kind of the incentive to do it. Like we really should have turned off that irrigation a long time ago. I really like the way they've made a big impact on their household water use, primarily through reducing unnecessary irrigation. They reckon that most of the savings has come about through just shutting off unnecessary irrigation. So looking at plants, particularly shrubs and trees that are now established by just sort of, you know, um, cutting off the irrigation to those areas only. And the garden's thriving, it's looking great. And they've nearly half their water use. And of course, it's not just the outside water use, but also how they've gone and installed flow restrictors to the various taps uh, to cut back on that amount of water that's running. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that's a fairly pronounced cutback, nearly half their, their water use saved. Jason and Kate, along with their three young children, had amazing results from the first 12 months that we collected data, using 46% less mains water than the local average. But when we returned to see how they were going six months later, mains water usage had increased by around the same amount and there was a huge spike in the month of March. We needed to find out why. Was that when we were trying to um, make that tree come back to life? I was wondering, oh. that. <laughs> were you flooding that, leaving that on for an hour or two? Well, yeah. No, not an hour or two, but it was on, and then obviously because we'd transplanted the other no, tree. So there were two big trees yeah. that we were trying we're to watering. resurrect. Were watering in March? Yeah, it would have it been. It would have been in March. Because yeah, that's that, when they ripped the tree You out. could easily, you yeah. I mean, if you've got 25, 30 litres a minute flow rate coming out of your hose, Mm. Um, you know, in, in 10 minutes there's two, 300 litres. Yeah. If you're doing that three times a week, yeah. that's, that's where you want to go. That would be yeah. a tree. The data never lies. Yeah, well. that's yeah. it. Yeah. Jason and Kate should be able to get back on track now they know where their increased water use came from in order to reach their goal of reducing water use by 10% by the end of the project. Over at Michelle and Tim's high performance home, Water management is a thing of beauty. They have 6,000 litres worth of rainwater tanks and a state-of-the-art grey water recycling system that is plumbed into their washing machine, toilet and garden irrigation. The first 12 months data shows that they are below the local mains water average, but for this study, we're interested to see if they're able to reduce their total water use despite all of the fantastic systems that they have in place to 
see how much behaviour can impact the results. After a further six months, the data shows that the water use has interestingly increased by 2%. You could have been jamming when we left the hose on as well. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you could Can see it though. You could see yeah. it on the graphs, and because that's how I realised the hose was on, because I had a look the next morning, and I was like, how come we've used a constant amount of water all night? And that's yeah, we great. had a little flood out. But that's, that's really good to know that the data display helped you identify yeah. it and turn it off. With the water set up here, we're always saying, oh, we're probably just turning into water pigs because mm. we're not using stuff from um, mains water. So you don't really get that feedback, whereas this does give yeah. you a bit of that information. It just shows that there are many factors that impact water use at home. And if we know about them, we can make changes. Michelle and Tim's goal is to reduce mains water use by 30% by the end of the project. And with the knowledge that they now have from the access to the data, they are determined to make it happen. To find out more about the Josh's House Living Labs project and to access fact sheets and more info on water saving ideas for your place, go to joshshouse.com.au. You can also join the conversation on the Josh's House Facebook page. Come on, get involved and let us know how you save water at your place.